Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here, one of the instructors for the upcoming Photoshop Virtual Summit 2. Yes, that's right, the sequel is coming, and I'm uh, very excited. We're going to have a lot of fun like we did last time. How often does a sequel come out the same year the first one did? It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, in this short video, though, I wanted to share with you a few tips, um, some compositing tricks I used over and over again, uh, largely using channels. Now, there's a... Um, the Selection tools in Photoshop have come a very long way, and they're very impressive, uh, making selections much easier than they were years ago. But I still utilize channels in a variety of ways to create some uh, creative selections and just be able to use them in, in ways to make my compositing a little bit better. Uh, so I just want to share with you a few tricks there. Uh, for instance, here I've got uh, several elements that you might find yourself using in a compositing project. You know, you got smoke elements and some uh, graphic HUD elements like this, and even spark and fire elements. You, you see those as a, as a finishing touch on movie posters and such like that. The problem with the these kind of elements is that they usually come flat um, as a single layer document, as you can see right here. And uh, what we want to do is actually be able to extract these elements so they have transparency as part of our compositing uh, project. <clears throat> so what I want to do is, uh, let's start with this one here. Let's just say I've got a graphic element like this one, and I want to actually get this shape um, onto my design. Uh, so to quickly extract that, we're going to go and bring up our channels palette here. Now in this case, this is a simple uh, black and white graphic. There's no color variation here, it's just very straightforward. So in order to get a selection of the, the graphic element area, I'm going to hold down my command key, control on Windows, click right on the RGB thumbnail here. What it does is it loads the brightness or the luminance of the image as a, a selection. Now in this case, it's a black and white graphic, so the luminance is just the white area, leaving the black area unselected. Well, in this case, that is not what we want selected, so we're just going to go to select and choose inverse because it selected the bright area, which is the white, so just inversing that, I'm going to go into my layers channel, create a new layer, and let's just go ahead and just fill that selection with black. And if we turn off the background layer, there's our graphic element nicely extracted. Now you might think, why didn't I just copy and paste um, right from the background layer onto a new layer? Reason being is that it picks up the anti-alias noise sometimes if it's on a white background like that. So just creating a new layer and filling it completely with uh, the, the, the one color um, avoids that, uh, picking up any of that anti-alias noise in there. So now we've got our graphic extracted, ready to add to our design. So if I wanted to go in here and just lock the transparency, fill it with white in this case, and this is the great thing about it is that we can make it whatever color we like bring it into our image and change my blend mode to whatever it's going to be, something like overlay, lower the opacity, and there we have our graphic integrated into the scene. So using that same principle would apply uh, to other elements as well. Let's go to the sparks here. Now this one I use all the time, and of course spark elements tend to come on a dark background like this, so we need to extract it. Using um, Oftentimes you'll take it and just simply put it in the image and use a screen blend mode. But I like to have the uh, the fire element actually separated from its background, makes it easier to to work with and composite with. Now in the case of fire on a back a black background, the red channel is going to have all the detail. So all you got to do is just simply command click on this red channel instead of the RGB channel, and then you got the, all that area selected. Now in this case, we will go ahead and copy or by pressing command J or Control J, copies that selected area to a new layer, as you can see right there. However, it does, as I mentioned, pick up a little bit of that background area. Uh, in this case, is that a little, that, a little bit of that black area. Now, to get rid of that, you'll simply go to the layer menu and go down to matting and choose remove black mat. And there you go. Nice, clean spark extraction. We'll take it and drag and drop it over. And now we've got those elements ready to composite right over our image there. And lastly, uh, smoke is another element I use a lot, and same principle applies here. You're going to go into your channels palette, look for the one that has the most bright uh, contrast to the background. This is just a white smoke and a black background, so it's simple enough. I'm just going to use the main composite channel, RGB channel. Command click on it, loads the selection, click a new layer, again filling with white, and now we've essentially got that cloud or smoke element extracted. We'll just drag and drop it over and scale it into fit in, and now we've got those elements nicely pulled. Now in the case of this smoke element, because it's um, got its transparency, to change the color of the smoke is merely locking the transparency and just giving it another color fill, something like this. Ooh, no, not quite that much. Something like that, just to give a little bit of a color 
element to the scene there. There we go. And that's just filling in the smoke area, as you can see right there. So there's different things to think about when you are compositing and ways you can utilize channels in order to get uh, selections of elements to creatively blend them into your composite scene. Going to be using uh, many tricks like this, plus a lot more others in the virtual summit. We hope to see you there coming soon.